welcome to Ash Venture. It is 7 a.m. I have to head out to work at about 7.30, so I thought I'd have a brief chat. This video is about my day as a locum resident medical officer or RMO. I'm heading to a private hospital in Chelsea. And I'm gonna take you along and tell you a little bit about what it's like to be a locum doctor. It should be a good day and I am excited to show you what it's like and hopefully give you a bit of information, say if you're considering doing locum work or if you're a medical student and you're just looking at different options or if you're just interested in other people's jobs. If you're new here, my name is Ash, I'm a doctor, I live in London, I love traveling and personal finance and you'll find videos about medicine, travel and personal finance on this channel. So I did a previous day in the life video and I know in that video I said I normally have a cheeky croissant or crunchy nut for breakfast and I was trying to improve. So now I don't have anything. Now I'm trying out intermittent fasting and I'm like intermittently intermittent fasting. So I don't do it every day, I'm building up slowly, but on the days I work I find it a lot easier because I'm distracted in the morning. So I'm just having a coffee today and then I'll head to work in about half an hour. It's a 20 minute cycle from here and I use the bars bikes or the city bikes and I can rent one for the day just outside my apartment which is handy and it costs two euro or two pound a day or I think 90 pound for a year and you can use it as much as you like so it's a pretty good deal. In that video where I talk about my breakfast I also mentioned what an RMO is but in case you missed it a RMO or resident medical officer is a non-consultant doctor or junior doctor who works in private hospitals. It's quite a small group of us, so I actually work across a few different private hospitals and I feel that I see the same people everywhere. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out why that is. I think people just don't know very much about this job. When they advertise for positions, most people who are looking for new jobs as a doctor, they go to the NHS website, in England that is, and they wouldn't see these jobs because they're not NHS. I'm not sure, but anyways, it feels like a lot of people don't know what an RMO is, even within medicine. These hospitals, normally I work, I'm not full-time locum, so normally I work at one independent private hospital, and my contract is to do seven 24-hour shifts in a four-week period. Roughly that works out as two 24-hour shifts in a seven-day period. And I never work the day after. So if I finish at 8 a.m., I never work that day. So that takes up four days. And then I have three clear days. So I try and do one extra shift a week as a locum doctor. I'm gonna head out now. I'm gonna change once I get there. So I can pretty much wear whatever I want. Right now, I'm just wearing some leisure, active leisure wear. I don't know, active leisure wear. Gym pose, basically, but I am cycling, so it's kind of justified. <laughs> this is an example of one of the bike stations that I use, not the exact one, as I thought that would be unwise to post on the internet. It was quite busy traffic on the way to work, so I didn't really film much, but enjoyed this beautiful stock footage of London. In today's job, I am going to be a general medical RMO, and I'll be seeing patients on what's called the Amber Zone, so these are patients that have all tested negative on admission, but they haven't been isolating at home prior to coming in. So most likely unplanned admissions. Whereas there's also a green ward and those patients have been isolating at home for the last 10 days. And obviously those patients knew they were coming in, so they were coming in for elective procedures. And there's another RMO who I'm working with and they see those patients. The day starts with a handover from the night RMO at 8am. After handover, I will go and see the patients on the ward and then I will discuss their plans with the consultant. After that, I'm there to respond to any jobs that come up or to chase up scans and investigations that we may have ordered for the patients. Also, I'm there to cover if any new patients are going to come in through the urgent care centre or rapid referral pathway. So essentially, I just see new patients that are coming into the hospital.
Hi everyone, so it's 11.30 a.m. I've seen all the patients on the ward. I've discussed the plans with the consultants, seen all the bloods and so far everything is going okay. They all have plans made for them and now it's just about doing a few odd jobs and if anyone comes in, I don't think anyone is planned to come in but uh, there might be some unplanned emissions coming in the afternoon. In terms of locoming, I'll talk a bit about that. As I mentioned before, I do have a regular job, so I'm not a full-time locum. And I think there's definitely some advantages in that. It gives you just some security. Like I know I'm getting a certain amount of income every month. If I get sick, I will still get paid. Like I have sick leave, I can take annual leave. Whereas if you're a full-time locum, you do need to consider that. I've heard some people that they were had a contact so they had to isolate at home for 14 days or 10 days so that means 10 days of no pay and say if it's an unscheduled 10 days and you're relying on the money it can be quite difficult uh, equally if you want to go on holiday you don't have any annual leave if you're a full-time locum you just uh, work a lot and then i guess build up an amount and you know you're not going to be uh, earning anything in that time you're away on the flip side I do have to do those seven shifts every month and I have to work my locums around those shifts. I mean seven shifts is not that bad but <laughs> so I can't complain. This particular hospital is part of a group of private hospitals. It's one of the I think maybe the largest group of private hospitals in the UK. Once you apply to be a locum on their bank is what it's called, you do an interview, you do lots of documents, they send them your whole life history, get it verified by a lot of people. And when you're finally accepted, then you can work across all the sites, which is really nice. And it just means you're more likely to get locum work. All the shifts come up on an app. Once a shift comes up, you apply for it. So then in each hospital, there is a lead RMO or there's a road to coordinator and they're the people that are approving the locum shifts. So I think the competition may have gone down recently because I'm getting a lot more shifts, but previously there were something like 10 applicants for every locum spot because they are quite nice shifts. And the thing is, once you work once and they know you, then you're way more likely to get shifts again. So I didn't get, I think for 10 shifts, the first 10 shifts that I applied for, I didn't get a single thing. And then there was one really last minute one and I got that. I think it was like someone had obviously just called in sick, they put it up and I was like, oh, I'm gonna do it. And I was like super tired. It was like not an ideal day for me. I was like, I really need just to get this first shift in. And then since I did that shift, they got to know me and yeah, now it's been a lot better. I can get them quite consistently. Pros and cons of locum work. Locum work generally, if you have a lot of shifts, choice, a lot of choice for shifts, then really you can just plan to do shifts whenever it suits you as opposed to whenever the road coordinator tells you to work. So if you want to go on holiday, you just don't book any shifts that week and you don't have to beg and plead to get time off, which is really nice. Uh, equally, if you have something coming up that you need to save, say you're saving for a deposit or you're saving for a holiday car, etc., you can just schedule lots of shifts in and then you get a bit more money. And yeah, those are the main benefits. Also, the shifts are paid more per hour than you would if you were a regular staff member. In terms of the downsides is that because you're covering unscheduled leave most of the time, or you're covering annual leave or a lot of the time it's sick leave last minute, you have to um, be quite flexible and equally a lot of the times I'll go to a hospital, not a lot but it's happened quite a few times that I'll go, I'll turn up to work and I'm booked in to work a particular shift in an area, say oncology, and then they'll say, oh actually we're much shorter in A&E, they're equivalent of A&E, it's called AAU, will you work there? And you kind of have to say yes, because you're a locum. <laughs> and if you are the type of person that just likes to know what they're doing in advance and likes to um, have a bit of routine and structure, it's definitely not for you. And equally, if you do like a certain hospital, like I really like this hospital, but it's hard to get shifts here because obviously everyone likes this hospital. So I've only done three shifts here this year, 
so I have to be flexible in that I'll go to different hospitals, do shifts I maybe don't like as much. The difference between private hospital locums and NHS locums is quite variable depending on the shift that you do. But I mean, a shift like this, like I had a few patients this morning, uh, now it's fairly relaxed. I might get a bit busy in the afternoon, but in general, it's not as busy as the NHS. It definitely isn't as pressurized, I feel, because the cons it is consultant led, so you're not making decisions. I mean, on the flip side, it's maybe not as intellectually stimulating, but um, in terms of pressure, I don't feel it's that much pressure. Uh, you do have to pay a bit more for insurance, so because you're working in a private hospital you get separate indemnity insurance and you have to tell them that you're working in a private hospital and you disclose your salary and it works out a bit more. The benefits of the food and everything, so I did talk about that in the previous video and everyone seems to, they like the food and the fact that I get nice toiletries, those are the comments I always get. <laughs> so this hospital it varies, I don't, we get free dinner. The dinner is really nice, I'll show you later. But there's a whole big menu, it's actually the patient menu and we can order off that and yeah we'll have dinner about 6.30, it's great. Lunch is not free, there's a canteen and it's very reduced so a full dinner costs about £3, £3.20 I think. And there's free tea and coffees and I found a biscuit stash so that's nice, it's just a cupboard full of biscuits. I hope that we're allowed to take them because I have been taking them. Nobody said anything, so yeah. <laughs> There's also like nice teas, which is also a big benefit. I like tea. And the coffee machine. This is said coffee machine. You got all those different options, so that's nice. And that's the biscuit that I stole. It's actually two biscuits and the on-call phones. This is the on-call room. Everyone's always curious about the on-call room. So it's actually not a patient room. This is just dedicated for doctors, which is a bit different from the other hospital. And I'm sitting at a big desk with a computer. And then this is the dinner. So obviously I knew I was filming. I was like, I'll be really healthy. <laughs> they have loads of options. You can order starters, desserts. I've tried out a few different things, all very good. After dinner, it's time to go home. And this is my cycle home. Look how pretty. And I was in time for a beautiful sunset in Hyde Park. Perfect way to end the day. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!